Today we're going to build two different versions of a DIY coffee table. So believe it or not, I've actually never built a round wooden top. So I figured with today's project, I'd rectify that by building two of them. Well, I guess one is technically a shelf, but the same process applies. In these shots, I'm taking a couple pieces of four quarter white oak and cutting them into various lengths. And we'll go over why in a minute, but after that was finished, I headed over to my table saw where I first ripped each of my pieces to about nine inches wide and then flip them 180 degrees to rip each piece along the other end at 8 inches. So what I'm trying to do here is get two circles out of my pieces and they need to be 36 inches and 30 inches in diameter respectively. So I calculated it out and these were the boards I needed to cut to yield that. Next I laid things out and marked where I could install some dominoes and then started assembling everything. And here, no matter what you're using, you just want to make sure that you're really careful about where you place things so that you don't end up exposing them when you cut the circle. And speaking of that, after they were dry, I could start cutting the circle. Next I could start laying out the pattern that I wanted to cut into my top and those are not my hands. Oh yeah, that's because I actually collaborated with Sam from DIY Huntress and Alicia from Pneumatic Addict on this build. And they'll actually both have videos on their channels that go into detail about what they did. So I don't want to spoil it here, but just to give you a little preview, I'll say that Sam did some really awesome pattern work and some staining on the tabletop. And Alicia showed us how to bleach white oak and how to spray a finish. And seriously, if you've ever been looking to make some white oak look truly white, check out their videos. This shot right here shows the difference between the bleached and natural oak, and it's very significant. So I'll link to both videos in the description so that you can check them out after this. Okay, so for this project we wanted to do things a couple of ways. One was fairly straightforward with some hairpin legs though they do have a shelf, which is pretty unique. And the other version is going to have some custom legs. So in these shots, I've just been cutting out some blanks that I'll be able to get my legs from. And these are going to be pretty standard four eyes type legs. Now, Sam and Alicia had never made legs like this before, so it seemed like a good opportunity to show them how I do it. Here, I'm marking out my taper on one of the pieces, but for the other one, we have to start by cutting the blank into a parallelogram. And luckily there were two, so Sam went ahead and made the first one, and Alicia could make the second. After that, we marked out our taper on one of the pieces and used that to set up our tapering jig where we could cut out four legs, even though we're only going to be using three of them. So once you have your jig set up, it's really easy to bust them out. Just cut your piece, flip it around 180 degrees, and cut your next leg. Then get another piece and keep going until you have enough legs to keep you satisfied. After that, we use the same process to cut out four more tapered pieces, and these will be the upper portion of our legs. So basically at this point, we have four of each of these two pieces. And to join them, we're going to be using a miter cut. In order to figure out exactly how to cut that, I'm going to hold the pieces together and strike a line on each that should be cut off. 
Then I take my piece over to my table saw and line the cut up with something that I know is parallel to the blade, lock in the miter gauge, and then have at it. Once those were cut out, somehow I forgot to film it, but we glued them together with a combination of some wood glue and some CA glue. And this was just to temporarily attach them while we cut in some splines that are going to give them their real strength. And you might notice in these shots that I'm getting a lot of tear out, but that's okay because this part of the leg is going to be up against the underside of the table. So basically you'd never be able to see it unless you detach the leg. To attach the hairpin legs, you can see I made a bunch of marks on the underside of the table to figure out exactly where to attach them. But pretty much I wanted to use my grain as a starting line, and then I added the other two legs 120 degrees away from that first leg. After that, I used these shelf brackets that mount to the hairpin legs to hold a shelf. And honestly, I wasn't sure if these were going to work on a circular table, but thankfully it wasn't a problem. Though in these shots, I'm actually attaching them upside down. If I were doing it the right way, these screw holes would be countersunk, then you can just put a screw through each hole and into the underside of the shelf to hold it in place. Okay, so for the wooden legs, I made a pretty big mistake in making these. Basically, I got ahead of myself and assembled them before I had cut the joinery that I planned to use. My initial idea was to use an elongated washer, which you have to mortise in so that the washer runs perpendicular to the grain. So each leg would actually take the washer in a slightly different manner. But in any case, none of that matters because I would have had to break the legs apart to mortise in the washers. And I think that the reason that I didn't consider this is because normally when I build this style of leg, it comes together like this instead of like this. Thankfully for the pictures, we were able to get them to hold in place with just a simple screw. And I guess I could argue that for this application, that's actually a fine way to attach them because the legs aren't attached to anything else. So basically the table's free to contract or expand and the legs will just move with the top. All that said, I guess I'll never officially know because I'm gonna use the hairpin legs. Though as I'm saying that, I think it's further reinforcing my stance because hairpin legs don't consider wood movement for the exact same reason, right? So I guess that proves that three things can work and move independently, even if it is for a common goal. Thanks for watching, and make sure to watch Sam and Alicia's videos linked below. Alright, see you in the next one.